Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. And here we're going to look at set functions on measurable spaces. And as a reminder, the videos in this playlist are meant to be watched sequentially. It's not possible to go back and redefine every term that we use in an upcoming video. So here, uh, as a reminder from the previous video, a measurable space is a tuple where omega is a set of sets and f is a sigma field on these sets where uh, omega is a set, f is a sigma field on these subsets of omega. Now another definition, uh, a measure on a field f is a non-negative extended real valued set function mu on f such that whenever a1 through the sets a1 a2 to you know to infinity form a finite or countably infinite collection of disjoint sets in f we have that the measure of the union of the sets is equal to the sum of the measures of each individual set now mu is called finite or countably additive measure so if this relationship only holds for, for a finite, say one to n, you know, a sum of finite sets, then it's called a finite additive measure. If it holds for an infinite number of sets, then it's countably additive measure. Now, a measure space is a tuple. So we take the, the measurable space, the set and the sigma field on the sets, then we put, then we add a a measure to the sigma field. So where uh, omega and f is a measurable space and mu is a measure on the sigma fields f. Now remember a measure is a non-negative set function. So another definition, so let sigma uh, omega and f be a measurable space, let a be an element of the sigma field f Define mu of A as the number of points in the set A, then the set function mu is a measure on F called the counting measure on omega. An example, let's let mu be a counting measure on an infinite set omega so that there's a sequence of sets that decrease to the empty set with the limit of the measure of these sets not equaling zero. So if we let if we let represent omega by x1, x2, etc. So those are the sets in omega. And we let a n be the set xn, xn plus one, etc. Note that as n increases, a n decreases to the empty set. So that should not be zero, it should be empty set. Now, note with the limit of our sets equals infinity. So for each n, the measure is infinity. And as you increase n, the counting measure is always infinite. So there's, the limit is infinity even though that the set in limit decreases the sets, you know, the, lim the sequence of sets limits to the empty set. So note that this means that mu is finite additive. So at any, you know, for a countable number, no, for a finite number of sets, it is finite additive. But when we set things go to infinity, then it's not countably additive. We can't do it for an infinite number of unions and sets. Example two, let F be the field of finite disjoint unions of right semi-closed intervals of R and define the set function mu on F, the, the field, as follows. So if it's this semi, you know, right semi-closed interval, then the measure let me rephrase that. The set function is A. If it's this interval from A to B, then the 
set function is b minus a if the interval is b to infinity then the set function is minus b now why did I go slow and not call it a measure instead I made sure to call it a set function and the answer is these these values here can be negative right and a measure is non-negative has to be you know zero or positive and so since this can take on negative values it's not a measure but it's still a set function um, also the, the measure of the entire real number line is zero so now if I one through I n are disjoint and the measure of the union of these disjoint sets is equal to the sum of the individual measures show that mu is finite additive but not countably additive on f now here it's it's saying if this is true and so in a sense we assume that it is true and then we just show that it's not countably additive but how would you show this and, and it's straightforward to show finite additive and it's essentially you go through the cases you know let that let the measure from a to c show that it's equal to this measure and you can do that by the definitions of measure that they provide you can just show that that's equal to this you go through cases where it's you know from a to infinity and show that it's equal to the union, the sum of the uh, two sets, disjoint sets, in the same way here. Now, to show that it's count that it's not countably additive, let's let the sets a one be, you know, minus infinity to one, and then a n is uh, n minus one to n. So we're creating disjoint sets across the number line here. Now, we know that the measure of the entire space is zero. And that's, it, they defined it that way. Now, we want to look at the union of all these sets. And if it's countably additive, it, it should equal the sum of the individual uh, measure of these set functions or it's not a measure the value of the set function but if we look at if we look at the individual measures for these disjoint sets they actually sum to infinity so it doesn't add to this and, and if you look at this here so the it going from here to here is like taking this outside of that measure right or put a, if we put that back in then we get the whole number line and this doesn't work for this example so this set function is not countably additive okay well that's all i have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye